Once upon a time around here, I am one with the ball. The ball is one with me. Ah! Way before the Industrial Revolution made it possible for man to swing a graphite composite shaft at a super compressed fluid core golf ball, there were bears, grizzly bears, or if you want to go by their Latin name, Ursus horribilis. They roamed this region for thousands of years, scarfing salmon, protecting their cubs, and basically just being bears. There aren't any bears around here anymore. They're extinct. The species that's replaced them goes by the scientific name Dorcas horribilis, or as they're also known, range boys. They roam the region in system 6,000 range mobiles, scooping balls for a whopping $3.50 an hour. They are the lowest life form on the planet. Even amoebas laugh at range boys. I didn't want the job, but unfortunately, the guy who runs the place, my dad, wouldn't take no for an answer. That year alone, he had lost 10 range boys. Some had quit, some had been injured, and some had just lost their mind. As for me, Dad hoped the job would help me get to know the business and maybe bring us a little closer. I saw it as a way to become extinct, just like the grizzly bears that came before me. This is me taking the back way to work. I wasn't afraid of being killed or going insane. That I could handle. I was afraid of something far worse. Total humiliation. If anybody I knew found out that I was working for my dad as a lowly range boy, the gossip horn would be blown from every hilltop, spreading the news far and wide. In scientific terms, I'd be dead meat. My only hope was to avoid all human contact. Just stay in the cart, never go to the bathroom, and in a month, it would all be over. While I groveled in fear, Pete was training Artie to win the annual long ball hitting contest. <laughs> Beware the duffer. Beware the duffer! <laughs> I'm not from... Ow! Pete tried not to get too cocky, but it doesn't hurt to have a superhero who can hit the ball into the next area code. Hello. The only problem was that when Artie's ballistic blast went soaring into the next county, guess what pathetic dink had to go find them? Don't you think you're being a little bit paranoid about all this? Paranoid? Paranoid? Tell that to Norm Head Cheese Scrumpkin. He was a range boy. Norm Scrumpkin? Didn't he move away after his dad got transferred? That's what they said. But everybody knows that he moved so he could start a whole new life. He even got plastic surgery. They changed his entire face. Really? All it takes is one person from school to see me. That's all it takes. Just one person, and it's over. You mean someone like Endless Mike Hellstrom? Exactly. That guy hates me. Oh, no! Howdy, Mike. Are we going to see you at the long ball tournament? Big cash prize this year. Yeah, it's mine. I've been working on my visualization techniques. See, what I do is, uh, I imagine your son's head on my tee. The 
rest takes care of itself. Well, you know, it's funny that you should mention my son. What's happening? Looks like your dad's pointing toward the cart. No, Dad, please, don't do it. Well, I don't know if Pete told you about this. You know, he probably doesn't want to brag. Ah! Mm. Yeah, hey! care if he is a mutant. He's got two hands, doesn't he? Then he can hold on to his club. Artie's slippery grip had saved me for the moment, but it was obvious that I was going to need a better plan than just ducking and whining. Here's a radical idea. You can just be true to yourself and try not to care what other people think. What are you, crazy? I have a better idea. The grizzly bears that used to live here got wiped out, mostly because of pollution and hunting. According to town history, no one has seen a bear in this area for 20 years. But on one blustery November day around 3.30 in the afternoon, a species of bear known as Ursus horribilis was officially back from extinction. Not that anyone noticed at first. We're here at the fabled 15th hole here at the Mighty Bear, where school bus driver Stu Benedict is preparing to tee off. Stu, who's been pretty depressed since his girlfriend left him over nothing, could really use a good shot right about now. I just want you to know that my range is your range today. I'm at your disposal, Giff. I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> well, I'd say north, maybe northeast, you know, blowing 15 miles per. You know, I, I hope I'm not talking out of school here, Giff, but around here, we take our golf pretty seriously. Yeah, I can see. So that's why you got the guy in the bear suit driving around out there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ah, hello, my little friend. Let's hit a few. Pete! Pete! Stop! Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Pete! Pete! Stop! 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 Move over! Move over! Son. Do you know why people come to my range to hit golf balls? To hit golf balls? Wrong. Look at them. They all have problems. For, for some of them, it's family troubles. And others have jobs they hate. And a few of them, well, I don't know what the problems are. The point is, their lives are anything but perfect. But when they tee up a ball, there's always that dream that they'll hit the perfect shot. And when they do, for that moment, their lives are perfect. Do you understand what I'm saying? Good. Now, now get this. Some kid driving around in a smelly bear suit is not part of that dream. I tried changing his mind with some bear fun facts, but his brain wouldn't budge. Hey, Dad, did you know that once a bear was almost elected to the House of Representatives? Also, this is interesting. A bear can eat his own weight in trout. I had one last chance. Did you ever see that Gentle Ben episode? Where Gentle Ben saved that blind kid from the mine shaft? Well, that, that, that kid would have died in that mine shaft. He risked his life for that poor kid. You see, Dad, bears are great. They're brave, kind, and they work for minimum wage. Well... You won't regret it, Dad. Oh, and Dad, it's not Pete anymore. For the next two weeks, it's Mr. Bear.
After weeks of living in fear, I was finally free. Free to roam the sacred ground of my bare ancestors without fear of being exposed as a lowly range boy. With my new identity, I was invincible. The things that would have bothered Pete Wrigley just didn't seem to bother Mr. Bear. Whoopsie! I'm sorry, Mr. Bear. Mommy, you been Mr. Bear. Don't worry, darling. I think Mr. Bear is a brave old bear. Look, he's waving. He's such a silly old bear. I love him. My crisis seemed to be over, but unfortunately, Pete's crisis was about to go critical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smashing time, boy. Smashing time! Mm -hmm. Five! Five! Uh-oh! Uh -oh. Ooh! Unpipe. Oh. It was bound to happen. You smash enough golf balls into the ionosphere at the speed of sound, and eventually, somebody's gonna get hurt. Clark! <laughs> Clark! No, I'm sorry, my little reptile friend. You know this turtle? Know him? Know him! Clark, tell the boy about Paris. You, me, Hemingway, the shiny tugboat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Clark! What's wrong? Don't you remember me, boy? It's me, your old pal, Archie. Yep, you guessed it. The impact of the ball had given Clark a bad case of turtle amnesia. And that was that. Until Artie helped Clark regain his memory, Pete's dream of winning the tournament was over. Meanwhile, my life as a bear had just begun. I had become one with nature. I had surrendered to the call of the wild. But as I was about to find out, the call of the wild can sometimes get you into big trouble. When we last left our friend Mr. Bear, he was running free in his natural habitat, doing his bear thing, when a strange new species entered the forest. Man. Let's play a little word association game. I don't want to play. Oh, come on, it'll be fun. You say a word, and I'll say the first thing that comes into my mind. Oh, come on, don't make me, Ray, please. Why don't you say, oh, I don't know, hunting trip? Well, that's two words. Oh, say it, Jer. All right, hunting trip. Total disaster. We haven't bagged one animal today. Well, maybe they were all hiding or something. I don't know. Why, are you blaming me? Follow me. Next! How much to hit the bear? Five bucks a bucket, but the bear works here. Read the sign. Well, what do you know? We'll give you 10 bucks a bucket. Lock and load, gentlemen, and happy hunting. Bear season had officially opened. For the first couple of days, it was mostly frustrated hunters who wanted to bag good old Mr. Bear. But then, the sheer, unadulterated, good time fun of being a bear spread throughout the town like a rare tropical disease. Wow! Ooh, ooh. That's right, a little closer. I can smell his fear, Mommy. <laughs> It smells like bacon. The only one immune from the fever was Stu Benedict. Still hoping to hit the shot that'll make him forget the flaming wreckage of his shattered life. While we're on the subject of shattered lives, I guess it's safe to say that my little planet backfired. My perfect dream of bare happiness was about to crash and burn. Such a silly bear. Bag the Bear Mania had arrived. And like all good manias, there were neat t-shirts, cool decals, and of course, plenty of live ammo. Bag the bear, we're bucket! Goody, you bag the bear yet? Meanwhile, 
Artie tried everything to trigger Clark's misfiring memory. <laughs> and escaping to Dusseldorf in the bobsled, Hemingway Drive and you in the middle and Gertrude Stein breaking in the back. Nah, oh sweet, oh, you remember Carol? <laughs> when that didn't work, Artie moved on to bigger stuff. Oh, sweet Clark, sweet Clark. The stars, don't you remember the stars? Oh, the twinkly, stinkly, smelly belly stars. While Clark tried to remember, I tried just as hard to forget that this whole nightmare was happening to me. This has gone far enough, Pete, and you know it. You have to quit. I can't. You have to, Pete. If you don't quit for your own self-respect, then do it for the bears. It's not that easy. What about my dad? It would kill him. He thinks I love it here. Then that leaves you with exactly one other option. What, lose the suit? No way. Not now. Nobody knows it's me in there, and that's how it's going to stay. I know it's you. And so does Ursa Major. That's her head. And that's her back. And those stars over there, they make up her belly. Wow. That's what I'd call a mighty bear. You can't run forever. No, but I can run for two more days. Then golf season ends, and the bears of Wellsville will be extinct once more. Two more days, just two more days, and my identity would be safe forever. What could go wrong? Paging Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, please report to the maintenance facility on the double. It was Pete's idea. Hit the bear, and not only do you win a cash prize, you get the honor of unmasking our friend, Mr. Bear. People want to know. Who is Mr. Bear? <laughs> well, tomorrow, my boy, they're going to find out. <laughs> what do you think, son? Huh? What do you think? Huh? I mean, is that great? I mean, what do you they say the last bear in these parts died choking on a bologna and cheese sandwich. Civilization killed the bears, but I wasn't going to let it kill me. It took me a while to get up my nerve, but on the day of the tournament, I told Dad the truth. I was thinking that maybe if you ran this way, you know, you might be harder to hit. Remember, the longer you take to, you know, to avoid getting hit, the more balls we sell. Dad. Hey, maybe if you ran with a hula motion, you know? Dad, I'm not doing it. The only reason I started wearing this dumb suit was because I needed a disguise. I didn't want anyone to know I was a range boy. Why not? Because once people find out you're a range boy, it's over. You're cursed for life. I'll have to move and get plastic surgery, like Norm Hedgey Scrumpkin. Norm Hedgey Scrumpkin? What are you talking about? I'm talking about a new face. No, oh, no, not that. Are you telling me you're embarrassed to be working here? Yes. I guess I am. Sorry, Dad. What am I going to tell all those people out there who have come here to unmask the bear? Tell them I've gone into early hibernation. While I took the easy way out, Artie had to cure Clark's amnesia the hard way. I must bump you again, Clark. It's the only way. Get out of my way, please. Excuse me. Come on, Alan, let's get out of here. What are you doing here? Your public wants you. I quit. You did? On behalf of all bears everywhere. Good afternoon, golfers, and welcome to the first annual Mighty Bear Bag the Bear Contest. <laughs> hey, where's the bear, Baldy? Yeah! Uh, well, yes, uh, oh, the bear. Well, um, he, he, he he's hibernating. <laughs> he's hibernating a little early this year. <laughs> you know, needs his beauty sleep. <laughs> yeah, beauty sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's such a silly man. <laughs> hey, come on, let's try to be civilized. Now he looks like a bear. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Hey, this is golf. Try to remember. Tell him, Gif. Don't call me Gif. Hey! 
Come on, Pete, don't look. It's too ugly. I wanted to go, but I guess there was more bear inside me than I knew. I had to protect my own. It was time for me to finally be a mighty bear. Go, oh, please, Clark, just go. Go. Go, boy. Go. Get the out of the way. living a lie. I wasn't afraid of being unmasked. I wasn't afraid of anything. I was invincible. Forgive me, Clark. It's the only way. I was the mightiest bear of all. Yes, it's me, Archie. Yes, the strongest man in the world. Oh, Clark. Yes. I have missed. No, I'm driving this time. We'll go see hey, the aren't you going to unmask the bear? Yeah. Hey, freak show, come back here. You're the only one who can unmask Mr. Bear. No, he's not. Pete, you're a range boy? Oh, I should have known. A range boy. Range boy. <laughs> not a range boy. I'm a range bear. That afternoon, we closed the range down for the season. Dad tried to explain why everyone had gone so berserk for bear blood, but he had no real answers. My theory is that whether they're hitting golf balls or shooting bullets, humans have this need to keep reminding themselves that they're the all-time king of the jungle. It comes from being insecure, I think. As far as this idea of golfers seeking some kind of dream of perfection, only Stu Benedict deserves something that beautiful. Still here on the fabled 15th, school bus driver Stu Benedict, long paralyzed by his fear of failure, reaches deep inside himself and finds something he never knew he had. Until there were more people like Stu and Artie in this world, bears and range boys would just have to keep an eye out for each other. What is it, Pete? Nothing. 